This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. A top US oil and natural gas trade group has come out against the passage of a bill that would open the OPEC oil production group and countries working with it to lawsuits for collusion on boosting petroleum prices. The legislation could create unintended negative consequences for the US oil and natural gas industry. While likely having limited impact on the market concerns that drive the bill, the American Petroleum Institute, API, said in a letter seen by Reuters on Monday and addressed to the chair and ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. The letter comes as the committee is expected to consider the bill as soon as this week. The European Union was preparing a ban on Russian oil, with possible exemptions for wary countries, as EU energy ministers on Monday held crisis talks on Moscow's demand that foreign buyers pay for gas in rubles or lose their supply. The European Commission is expected to propose a sixth package of EU sanctions this week against Russia over its invasion of Ukraine, including an embargo on buying Russian oil, a measure that would deprive Moscow of a large revenue stream, but that has so far divided EU countries. Russia supplies 40% of EU gas and 26% of its oil imports. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. U.S. natural gas production growth is waning at the same time many countries are looking for new suppliers to help break their dependence on Russian gas after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. The United States is already the world's largest producer of natural gas. But the two mainstays of production, the Appalachian region and West Texas, are seeing growth slow with companies blaming lack of adequate pipeline infrastructure, despite prices near 14-year highs. Since Moscow invaded Ukraine on February 24, U.S. gas prices have soared about 50% as European countries look to the United States, the world's second biggest exporter, to sell more liquefied natural gas, LNG, to wean Europe off Russian fuel. Oil prices fell on Monday as concerns over weak economic growth in China, the world's top oil importer, overshadowed fears supply might be crimped by a potential European Union ban on Russian crude. Brent crude futures were down $3.73, or 3.4%, to $103.41 a barrel at 14.03 GMT, while US West Texas Intermediate, WTI, crude futures fell $3.98, or 3.8%, to $100.71 a barrel. Markets in Japan, Britain, India and across Southeast Asia were closed for public holidays on Monday. China released data on Saturday showing factory activity in the world's second largest economy contracted for a second month to its lowest since February 2020 because of COVID lockdowns. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Gold prices fell more than 2% to a near three-month low on Monday as increased prospects of faster rate hikes by the Federal Reserve lifted US Treasury yields and the dollar. Spot gold fell 1.7% to $1,863.31 per ounce by 10.43 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 14.43 GMT, earlier hitting its lowest since February 16 at $1,854.36. U.S. gold futures dropped 2.6% to $1,862.70. There is pressure on gold market with the stronger dollar and yields amidst fears that the Fed might be more hawkish, said Philip Stribel, chief market strategist at Blue Line Futures in Chicago. China's economic activity in their factory data hit lows which is also pulling down the metals market, he added. The slump in China's main manufacturing sentiment index has yet to be fully reflected in prices for key metals, which remain well above levels seen during previous bouts of weakness in the industrial sector of the world's second-largest economy. The Official Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, fell to 47.4 points in April, down from 49.5 in March and the weakest outcome since February 2020, China's National Bureau of Statistics said on April 30. It was the second straight month for the index below the 50 mark separating growth from contraction, and the soft outcome came amid a series of coronavirus lockdowns in major cities, including Shanghai. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
Ukraine has formally closed its four Black and Azov seaports, which Russian forces have captured, the Ukrainian Agriculture Ministry said on Monday. The Azov seaports of Mariupol, Berdyansk and Skadosk and the Black Seaport of Kherson were closed, until the restoration of control, the ministry said in a statement. The adoption of this measure is caused by the impossibility of servicing ships and passengers, carrying out cargo, transport and other related economic activities, ensuring the appropriate level of safety of navigation, it said. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.